And I think it's by working with people like Claudia that you can see just how much is done at the human level, that we sort of fetishize algorithms and data. But actually what it really gets down to is, is getting better as scientists at really trying to use these kinds of, I mean, the sentiment study was classic. It was a problem of geolocation. He, you know, yeah. the dot on the map was, was slightly north of the school. And, and a tiny yeah. sample size and bad journalism. Exactly. Like, That's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 I, I think it's a topic that, that Gustavo can talk about. Like, 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 everybody published this study without doing the, yeah. the, the, the smallest amount of interrogation. That's right. Yeah, there's a lot to be done in terms of uh, data literacy. We, we haven't talked about that, but for journalists, this is a, it should be a, uh, maybe a, a, a class in, this, in the university nowadays. Because we are talking about data journalism is also almost like a pleonasm. We always have been working as, uh, with data, but we need more literacy now around tools and this kind of things. No. So that gets to, you know, going back to something that Andrew said, that data scientists, it's okay that it's scientists because it's math and other people can't do it or something. <laughs> um, I actually think one of the challenges is that I think almost everybody can be a data scientist. No, Claudia. <laughs> but I mean, I think that there is more of a perception that everybody can be a data scientist than a climate scientist, for example. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the challenge, you know, I think there's sort of good things and bad things about that. One of the challenges is as going back to the citizen science piece, you know, as we get more and more access to satellite imagery, and this is um, something that Gustavo engages with as well. We can open up more collective stewardship of our, our resources. But there's this challenge there, right? You know, there is a scientific process with Science with a Big S, which does have peer review, that does give us a sense of what, what do we believe as best as we can to be true based on our hypothesis testing. And then there's this mass assessment of, of Mm. our analysis of the data that's out there, looking for patterns. Now, I think there's something that can be gleaned from that, but the challenge is you could have headlines saying, you know, whatever's happened to the deforestation is assessed this way because I made this map and I, you know, am a data scientist and know nothing about what kind of trees are out there or whatever, but I can make this map. And you can imagine a shift in what is published, which is not expert driven, but it's, it's populist driven about describing what's happening on the earth. And I, I, I sort of feel a tension there because I think there's a lot of opportunity for engaging the public on this, but there are a lot of challenges that could guide us and misguide us in, in different ways. Yeah, I mean, I, just to close, you know, on, on Jer's uh, anecdote, you know, that, that question of what's the saddest place in New York might be the wrong question because the saddest place in New York isn't a place that we can get to. 